Warning, the following contains graphic content and language some may find offensive. Viewer discretion is advised. Africa changes you forever, like nowhere on earth. Once you have been there, you will never be the same. But how do you begin to describe its magic to someone who's never felt it? How can you explain the fascination of this vast, dusty continent whose oldest roads are elephant paths? Could it be because Africa is the place of all our beginnings? The cradle of mankind? Where our species first stood upright on the savannas of long ago? Brian Jackman. All right, so here we are at Columbus Airport, getting ready to start our journey here. All of our stuff. All of the stuff, the boom boom stick, <laughs> all the 30 days worth of shit we've got. Got anything you want to say? I'm ready to go. What are you going to do? Shoot some shit. Shoot some shit. <laughs> there you go, we're going to Africa to shoot some shit. Let's go to Johnstown. Let's go to what? Stafford. So what, what, what do you plan on shooting? <laughs> You're shooting a bunch of shit. Yep. All right, well, we made it to Joburg successfully after nearly 17-ish hours. How was the flight, Dakota? Great. Staffy? It sucks. It sucks. It always sucks. Good morning. Guys on the counter, the policeman. <laughs> You're allowed to drink in public. Yeah, she's legally allowed to drink here. You can't do that in my house. <laughs> We'd all be in jail right now if you tried that in my house. Hey, you're in the parking lot in the airport this is drinking. Africa. You can do what you want to. He's gonna come in when well, somebody's coming in with a baby and Paul tomorrow. I shot one this week, fucking short bro. It's extremely nice, very, very, very nice. Exquisite. How do you like about it? You've done a good job. How do you like about it? Very well done. I come in nice. You just you just got done remodeling, right? Yeah. I'll tell you a quick story. Yes. I was in the Bahamas for a long time. Queen Elizabeth came to visit us, and somebody asked Queen Elizabeth, what, what don't you like about being the Queen of England? And she said, the smell of fresh paint. Because <laughs> everywhere she goes. <laughs> and, and, and I assume you mean uh, Queen Elizabeth. Sorry, the uh, smell of fresh paint. Queen Elizabeth, uh, the human, not the boat. Correct, <laughs> the human, the human. Yep, fantastic. <laughs> well, I hope you enjoy your stay. Oh, we will. <laughs> What's your name? There we go. Answer. <laughs> right. Um, sorry, guys. Um, so, guys, what we having for you guys for dessert? I made you guys a chocolate mousse with um, whipped cream, um, with some cocoa powder on top, just for dusting and for some um, decoration on the mousse as well. So, dig in, guys, and enjoy it. I don't think it's very good, but I'll hear from you guys. Yes. Did you try that shit before you gave it to us? <laughs> Not really. <laughs> no, I don't like it. <laughs> so, a couple things. First, to my friends and family that have come along on this trip, I'm super excited. I go back to my first trip to Africa and the excitement I felt is exactly the same excitement I feel now for you guys and I can't wait for you to experience it tomorrow. Secondly, we've got a couple of special occasions. One, my buddy here of nearly 20 years is fixing to be elderly. 
Uh, you, I don't know if you can tell or not. Yep. And more recently, we've got Miss Dakota that just graduated high school that's going off to university. And because of that, we have a special gift for her tonight. We do. A special gift. So come on up. It is not a 6'5 Creedmoor. Holt, you are setting the high bar really high. So. All right. Africa is waiting. Come. You will acquire a taste of the dust in the scent of Africa's first rain. You will touch the open sky and learn to love the rustling grass. You will watch the setting moon in, at dark and camp beneath the stars. Sometimes little things we do make the biggest difference. We are so proud of you. This is why this Gimscock is a gift from us to you. Make your sights be straight and aim be true. This is your, this is our gift with love for you. Love, Sean and Toby. Nice. Thank you. Get them fun. On the morning of June 10th, the Salt Lake group is a bit sluggish, likely due to the events in the previous episode. Nevertheless, the backdrop of Tabatala's beauty enhances the morning. The anticipation for this day has been longstanding. Ever since departing a year ago, the yearning to return to Africa has persisted. Today serves as a powerful reminder of the deep affection held for this continent. Following tradition, the initial task at hand is visiting the range. This is essential to ensure the rifles have endured the journey intact and to re-establish zero if necessary. Dakota takes a few shots downrange using the SIG Trap 265 Creedmoor. The three shots, confirming their readiness, the group readies themselves to embark on the mission of guiding her towards her first African animal encounter. With the help of none other than the professional hunter and owner of the Wola Safaris, Mr. Chris Liebenberg. On top, halfway up. They're still kind of like Tell him what you shot. I just um, shot my first frame buck. How far? 168. Percent. Was you nervous? Yeah, a little bit. Did your heart pump? Yeah, <laughs> did my heart pump. No tracking on this one, is there? <laughs> That's the way we like it.
rafted unit tracks. Perfect shot. Look at the other way. Nice old brand too. Beautiful. Look at your shot. Perfect shot. <laughs> I figured they'd be bigger body. They're small. No, they're small on the ground. Pretty. Yeah. Well, what do you think? This is awesome. <laughs> I had a BG and an eye in my pocket the whole time, by the way. So a minute or two after they optic shot them, all this hair. All this hair stands up. Totally. It, okay, it, falls, it, totally, it falls totally down like this, so you don't even see it. You can smell it. Why? No, seriously, do it. Trust me. Smell right in there. Oh wow. Nice, huh? Yeah. Oh, smell, Mike. Yeah. Your name is Mike, eh? Yeah. Today. Oh wow. Like fucking candy. Yeah, nice. Well, we are first morning out. The Salt Lake group arrived last night. They had a few drinks. Maybe some of them had too many, but they deserved it. So. Yeah, first morning out, took a nice drive, saw a lot of animals this morning. And uh, Dakota's first trip to Africa, she didn't know what to expect. And uh, as we walked over a hill, we saw some uh, water buck, an old spring buck ram. And uh, the tracker said, that's a big old ram. So we listened to him. And as we came over the hill, we saw it sneaked up to a little, like a ledge. And uh, we put, set Dakota up on the bipods. The, um, she was nice and steady and the springbok took a few steps and as soon as he stopped when I said shoot she shot well done Dakota excellent shooting you listen and uh, I'm proud of you how was it it was good I mean obviously it's my first time here I haven't shot anything so the only thing I really have to do is listen and while we were shooting this morning he said when I tell you to shoot just shoot because if you wait longer you'll just start moving and freaking out so as soon as he said shoot I was ready excellent good morning good start and we don't know what the other people shot, we'll see when we get back at home. Experiencing initial triumph, Mike and Dakota venture out in pursuit of Blue Little Beast and Zebra, the prime targets on Dakota's list. However, as in the tapestry of life, appearances can be deceiving. Both Mike and Dakota swiftly grasped that the seemingly effortless springbuck hunt they had witnessed earlier is far from the norm in Africa. Africa's nature is dual-sided. It can extend kindness, yet simultaneously present the most challenging hunting environment imaginable. Frustration and exasperation are woven into this realm, but those who remain steadfastly committed ultimately unearth triumph. Although success may not align with the initially envisioned day, the dedicated and resolute will eventually seize their moment but it was not this day. United as a team, we stand shoulder to shoulder, our collective effort aimed at ensuring the success of every member. And in this endeavor, our aspirations bore fruit. Oscar, a cherished comrade, traversed endless stretches of treacherous mountainous land, his unyielding determination culminating in a triumphant moment as he secured a three-inch kudu bowl, a pinnacle accomplishment achieved on his inaugural hunt within well his very first day in Africa. Bull, we knew we had to jump quickly and our initial uh, setbacks plan. became mere shadows, so, eclipsed by the radiance of Oscar's achievement, our spirits intertwined. We devoted our evening to reveling in his victory, for we understood that the sun would rise again, and the realm of Africa remained ripe with opportunities to be embraced. Cheers, buddy. <laughs> Thank you again. Pleasure. How far was the shot? 230 yards. As the sun paints the sky with its golden hues, another exquisite morning dawns upon Tavatawa. Casting a brilliant spell on our surroundings, the air buzzes with a contagious excitement, fueled by the ripples of yesterday's events that continue to course through our veins. With the break of dawn, the entire team is brimming with fervor, eagerly anticipating the imminent return to the wilderness. The tale of day one unfolded into a chapter rich with achievements. Oscar and Dakota etched their names into the canvas of success, their endeavors bearing fruit that added vibrant hues to the journey. However, they were not alone in the embrace of fortune. Dan's journey commenced with an encounter of a warthog, a stroke of luck that foreshadowed the promising day to come. The symphony of triumph crescendoed as he added a splendid lechway to his list of conquests. 
Meanwhile, John scripted his own narrative of victory, setting the stage by claiming a zebra at the outset. And as the sun began its descent, he penned the final lines of the day with a monumental harvest of a giant lechway bull. Let the tally resonate, a grand total of six animals, each trophy representing the essence of the very first day of our expedition. The air is heavy with satisfaction, but also with a dash of contemplation. As we stand on the precipice of this journey, the challenge lies in sustaining the extraordinary momentum we've been gifted with. As the new day dawned over Tabatala's expansive landscapes, Mike and Dakota resumed their pursuit of the elusive zebra and blue wildebeest, picking up right where they had left off the day before. What are we doing this morning? Uh, we just got out of the lodge. It is hippy cold, and uh, we just spotted some zebra about 500 yards from us. Uh, so we let the truck just drive forward. We got off behind the cement reservoir. So about a few minutes, we're going to see if we can get close to them. And that is it. Their PH Chris is no stranger to the challenges posed by these keen eyed creatures that roam this vast African wilderness. Their attempts at stealthily stalking had been met with frustration as their prey continually eluded them. Yet in the midst of their efforts, Mike began to grasp a lesson I had once learned on my maiden voyage to the Dark Continent. It was a valuable insight, one that Africa imparts to those who are willing to listen. Take what Africa gives you. In this untamed realm, nature dictated the rules, and patience was the ultimate virtue. As they moved forward, Mike and Dakota would soon discover that sometimes, the wild heart of Africa was more generous than it first appeared. Sticks. Yeah, those those sticks suck. I told you. Should have grabbed mine out of Hannes' truck. You hit him. Yeah. Hit some. Oh, you know you hit him. I got it on video. You definitely hit him. Normally when they run off, when they take off like that, it's, it's a good choice. Put another one in, put another one in, it's still moving. No, I'm sure. He's going to go down. No, he's going to go down. He's going. <laughs> well done, son. That was fucking, that was hard. <laughs> Those sticks, it's hard. It's like, cool. Like, There's no ain't Kentucky Flats, my son. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Hell yeah. Thank you. Well, let's go see what I shot. What did you shoot? I don't know. It's got horns. <laughs> it's got horns. Were you looking at the horns? <laughs> uh, no, actually, I didn't, I didn't get to see this one very much. I did see the horns up on the hill, though. What was the back? Where was it? Like we're standing in the angle. That's the last the shot. That's the last shot. There's the bullet, yeah. 
Thank you, Bruce. Yeah. 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 Maybe I scared the shit out of it. Now you have the bullets right there. It is it. It is pretty. Beautiful. Thank you. That is beautiful. Well, 280 off the sticks is not easy. No, that's, that's the furthest I've ever shot. Is it? Yeah. We don't get to do that at home, so. No, that was good shooting. So. Hell yeah. I'm, Hell I'm yeah. happy with it. <laughs> Hell yeah. I come here with my friend Mike from uh, Ohio. USA and uh, second day out. We had a very good day yesterday. Um, got two lechways, zebra down yesterday, and uh, springbuck, the Kodas first animal, first trip in South Africa. And Mike said he really wants to shoot something. And uh, yeah, we had a good morning. Took a nice drive, didn't see much. And our trucker Mario spotted an impala. There were probably about 40 or 50 of them. And uh, Mike says, what is it? I said, Impala. He says, it's big. I said, yes. And he said, I want to shoot it. So <laughs> got hard. him, put him down on the on the ground, get on the bipod. We just couldn't get a shot and put him on the sticks. There we go. Good talk. Blooper reel. <laughs> yeah, I got him on the sticks and uh, he was shaking a little bit. He said, I can't see it. I said, just shoot it. How far was it? Uh, two was 238. Is 200, that 280. No, 280. Yes, 280. Just to correct you. 280. I wonder I thought about it too much. I put yeah. my arm under his arm. He was getting ready and yeah, shot at spot was a little bit far back, but he was angling a little bit away from us and uh, yeah, ran about 250 yards downhill and then bedded up and we shot him in the shoulder. Knocked his dick stiff. Perfect. Staffen found early success with an old Impala Ram that tested his abilities, albeit the success he achieved was relatively minor when viewed in the vast tapestry of life's grand schemes. Undaunted, we resumed our relentless pursuit of the elusive zebra and wildebeest, picking up the trail right where we had left off. The hunt unfolded at a pace that could only be described as leisurely, offering us a brief respite for contemplation. As we assessed our options, Dakota found herself at the center of a pivotal question. Should we persist in our hunt, or should we retreat to the comfort of the lodge, enjoy a hearty lunch, and recommence our expedition later in the afternoon? Dakota's response reverberated with unwavering determination, an unequivocal no, her conviction was clear. Our purpose in these vast lands was to hunt, and that mission would not be abandoned. Little did she know that within the span of just five minutes, her steadfast commitment to stay in the field would yield an unexpected reward. Once again, the now timeless adage began to echo through our group's collective consciousness. Take what Africa gives you. It served as a reminder that in this untamed land, fortunes could change in the blink of an eye, and the greatest rewards often lay hidden just beyond the horizon. Chaos, huh? Yeah. <laughs> the first shot was must have been high. It spawned and dropped. Yeah, because it looked like second, folded. But that second shot you shot. That was some chaos, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I told Chris to hang her right to go have lunch. The kid was like, fuck this, I don't know <laughs> Well, it's about just after half past 12. Um, we had a good morning. Mike shot an Impala. And um, 
after that, yeah, we haven't seen much. It's been blowing, it's been cold. And uh, on our way back to the lodge, I said, you guys want to go back to the lodge or do you want to go for another, just let's just sneak into this riverine here. And uh, Dakota said, no, let's go for a drive. And then what happened? Uh, we saw this big thing standing there in the sun. And last night my dad was after it and I was like, no, I'm shooting it. So <laughs> um, we came around the corner and went after it. And first time I shot it, ran and then I never shot anything on the run before. The second one, I hit it running, so that was pretty awesome. Get the end break on, yeah. Yeah, and then um, it came over here, and I shot it two more times, and then it was down. So it was an awesome hunt. All your shots was a hit. Well done. Good Lots shooting. of chaos, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Lots. <laughs> yeah. The dad was getting a little bit nervous there. <laughs> uh, once we saw, we started seeing the piles of blood. I was, I was a little better with that. So. Okay. Whatever. <laughs> no, seriously. Well, Sean, Sean piled it up. <laughs> So this is year two where we're going to try for the Cape Graceback. Big Mall's all set up, the spotlight set up. I think we're all going to put on some uh, nice warm jacket and warm gear, everything we have, and then we'll take a drive and see what happens. You better put a sock, <laughs> sock on your tally lacquer too. It's cold out here. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah. Mm, it's cold. I mean. See him there? Got him.